Caleb of the tribe of Judah. God points him out. My servant, Caleb, he said. So in Genesis 49, it says, the scepter will not depart from Judah, right? This is the father Jacob prophesying over his son Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. That's important. Shiloh is the Messiah. And then he says of, of Joshua, right? He was of the tribe of the house of Joseph. Both of those were the two good spies, Caleb and Joshua, in the book of Numbers. So Joseph, this is Joseph's prophetic prophecy from his father Jacob in Genesis 49. It says, from the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. And then it says, from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. The shepherd, the stone of Israel? Who's that? That's none other than the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Christ. Christ just means Messiah in Greek, Jesus, Messiah. And Jesus is Joshua, basically, in the Greek, right? Joshua would be the English, and Yeshua would be the Hebrew. So Joshua is also a picture of Jesus right there, too, you guys, of the house of Joseph or the tribe of Joseph. Pretty amazing stuff that God put all this together. I read this book. I ordered this because I saw it on the One for Israel video. And this was a this is a great book. This guy was making he's he's very uh, scholarly, but also um, blessed and anointed by the Holy Spirit because God gave him all this insight into who Messiah, son of Joseph, was. It was in this old Jewish tradition, but also in the Bible, right? Genesis forty nine, like we just saw. This is his book. I would suggest you check that out. And it was by David C. Mitchell, Messiah Ben Joseph. By, by David C. Mitchell. Excellent book. All right, let's continue on here. Numbers 32. None of the men who came up from Egypt from 20 years old and upward, God's telling them, right? He's telling none of the men that came up from Egypt 20 years upward shall see the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So they were not allowed to go in and see the land. Why? Because of their unbelief, you guys. Because they were doubting God, doubting God's goodness, you know, complaining, saying, why did you send us here? We're all going to die now. So Numbers 32 continues, For they did not follow me fully, God says, except for who? Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite and Joshua, the son of Nun. So Caleb of the tribe of Judah, Joshua of the tribe of Joseph, or the house of Joseph. For they have followed the Lord fully. So they followed the Lord fully. And what did the other guys do? For they did not follow me fully. What does that mean, you guys? That means you want to commit yourself to the Lord fully. And if we're honest, we really don't do that, right? Not fully, not all the time anyway. But you want to commit your trust and your faith to him fully. And that comes from getting up early in the morning. I do it, and it's a good thing. My friend Caleb, interesting, his name's Caleb, <laughs> my buddy from work. He was telling me, he's, a, he's a, one of my, it's just awesome, one of my best friends. This guy is a strong believer, a young guy who's a very strong believer, filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said he gets up at 3.45 every morning and, and reads his Bible and, and spends quiet time with the Lord. Sometimes his little kids wake up and spend time with him. They love it. And I started doing that too. And it's really changed my life and my walk with the Lord because I'm following him fully. I'm, I'm surrendering myself to him fully every morning. First thing, giving the first fruits of your life to the Lord with him. It's about relationship, having time with him, you guys. So that's what we see here. We see that uh, those two, Caleb and Joshua, for they followed the Lord fully. Now, here it is, guys. I promised you. We're going to get into this song. And this song is amazing, you guys. And it's Numbers 6. And Chuck Smith would go over this at the end of his messages during the Jesus revolution. This was a time when the Holy Spirit was pouring out in a supernatural, very powerful way. I was a little, little boy, and I remember God's presence, him just filling my heart with his warmness of his love and his peace and joy. 
And uh, it was an amazing thing. So my parents were saved in that movement, you guys. And we were part of a ministry uh, where we'd take drug addicts right off the street, introduce them to the Lord and, and house them and give them a new life. It was an amazing time. But Chuck Smith also loved Israel. He supported and loved Israel when others thought it was wrong. And he still did it anyway because he knew what God's word said about the people of Israel. They're still his people. So let's get into this. So this is straight from number six. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. This is the Aaronic blessing that he would uh, pronounce uh, for the people, for God's people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Isn't that beautiful? And be gracious unto you. Give you something good you don't deserve. That's what grace means. The Lord lift up his countenance. In other words, lift up his face upon you, my friend, and give you peace. Wow. 